Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to the Kids Health Revolution Kitchen, where we are together again cooking up better health for our kids, one simple but delicious recipe at a time. And this is the live school snack series where I come into you every Thursday with a recipe that is simple to make, nutrient dense, really tasty, and something that you can send to school with your kiddos so that we are packing those lunch kits full of the best, most nutrient dense foods we can, because then we know that we are providing our little kiddos with the foundation that they need, right? Food is literally the foundation of our health. It is what our bodies, our kids' bodies are built of. So when we're providing this great nutrient dense food for them day in and day out, that's where we start to see their health thrive. And if your child happens to have any sort of chronic health condition at all, this is where the magic really starts to happen. Changing your diet, making sure that you're providing foods that are nutrient dense and also gut healthy are gonna go a long way for laying that foundation of the healing that you're trying to do for your child to get their health back on track, no matter what their health condition is. So maybe it's something neurological, ADHD. I know there's lots of people that have just come into the community from the ADHD summit that was going on and welcome to everybody who's over there and watching. Uh, so if that's you, then coming in and making some of these simple recipes is a really great way to get started in helping your kiddo. Maybe it's something like eczema or asthma or arthritis. Maybe it's something like pandas. And that's what we're going through right now in my household. My son, even though we've been doing gut healing for a long time, uh, is now struggling with some chronic infections. So this is, uh, I talk often about the, the pyramid of healing and we've been working on this base layer of diet and environment and gut healing for a long time and made a lot of progress. Now his body's showing us that there's some chronic infections and issues that are a little higher up in the pyramid that we're needing to dig into. Uh, and get serious about uh, in helping him on his journey. And so that's where we are right now. And, you know, I think it's really important to share that with you guys so that everybody knows that when you're on this path, it's not an absolute straight line forward, right? You're gonna get progress, you're gonna be going along great guns, and then something happens and you feel like, oh no, like what's happened, what's going on? It's just an invitation to dive deeper and continue on the road that you're on. So we're still doing the gut healing protocols we've always done, but when something like this happens, when there's an infection or something where your child's body is really struggling, it can be an invitation to just step back a little bit and give the body even more of a break and a reset in terms of diet and digestion. So one of the things that we're doing right now in our household is that we are diving into uh, a little bit of a combination between autoimmune paleo. So we've taken out the nightshades, we're taking out nuts and seeds, and some of these foods that can be little triggers for inflammation in the body. And that's just because we wanna support the body as much as we can in getting the inflammation under control. And we're also trying to combine that with doing some low histamine because we know that histamine can be a trigger in the body, especially for some of these neurological conditions and symptoms. So we're wanting to make sure that we're not overloading that histamine bucket in the body with more dietary histamine. Uh, so that means I'm back in the kitchen a little bit again, right? I'm back in the kitchen inventing recipes that I know my son's gonna love but is free from a lot of these other foods that I would have been using a lot of. I used a lot of seeds in, in our diet for quite a while, so I've had to take those out and get back into the kitchen and find things that we can do that are doing the work of supporting his health the way that we need it right now. So for us, we're gonna be doing this sort of protocol for about 30 days, and then we're gonna start slowly reintroducing foods again and seeing how he's doing and tolerating those things. So. I thought it was a great opportunity to bring you guys some recipes that are nut free, egg free, you know, still of course dairy free, gluten free, grain free, uh, but also low histamine because I know that a lot of our kiddos, especially with neurological health conditions and especially with eczema and asthma, we want to make sure that we're taking care of that little histamine piece. So does that mean you never eat any foods with histamine? Maybe not but it means that you're not maybe eating them every day, day in and day out. Okay, so this recipe today, 
super simple, super quick to make, uh, just about five ingredients, I think is what we've got going on here, and they're tasty little cookie. So here's what we're gonna end up with in the end of things today. These are the sweet potato version. Uh, these are the ones that I took a little bit more time on, you know, get the little stamp in. You can also just do them as little drop cookies. Those are just as good. And these are sweet potato and coconut flour, pretty much. Now, if you're GAPS, if you're on the GAPS diet and you can't do sweet potato, what we also call yam, if you can't do yams, then you can still do this and you can do it with acorn squash. I've not tried it with butternut squash. You could try it, nothing to lose, but I do know that it works with acorn squash. So I'm gonna give you that as an option as well. And this is just another example of presentation for you. If your child likes cereal bars and stuff like that, you can do these up into little bars as a different way of presenting them. So. Let's get into what's in this recipe and how you're gonna make it. Don't forget, if you're in the community already in the uh, private Kids Health Revolution Facebook group, uh, you will get a copy into the files section there that you can just download of this recipe. Also, if you would like to get it straight into your inbox without having to go anywhere else, you go to the Kids Health Revolution website at kidshealthrevolution.com. Just pop in your email address and your name, and then every week when we do our school snack series, you'll get a copy of the recipe right into your inbox. So super simple, and then you've got it on hand. So make sure you do that. And let's jump into this. So we are doing uh, sweet potato or yam. So you want the really dark orange ones, okay? These are the guys that have a lot of nutrient density in them. The dark color, of course, means that they've got lots of phytonutrients in them, antioxidants, that's helping with inflammation and free radicals in the body. They're also a great source of vitamin A, vitamin C, and potassium. So these pack a pretty good nutrient punch. So I have literally just taken a small one, about this size, cut it in half, put it in a Pyrex baking dish, into the oven at 380 for about half an hour until it's nice and good and soft. Okay, that's how you want it to be. So we're just gonna plop those in. We're gonna do two of them in the recipe. I put them in skin and all, because the skin's got lots of great nutrition in it and it's got lots of fiber. So we want that for our kids. Let me set that to the side there so I can wipe my hands off. Now, if you're using squash, I used acorn squash, so I have the shell here, just so I can show you which one it is. It's this little green guy. So if you get one of these, just one acorn squash, same thing, cut it in half, plop it in the dish, and bake it at 380 for about half an hour until it's nice and soft. And then you're just gonna scoop the flesh out of these ones. I don't tend to use the skin. You could try it, but the skin's a little bit tougher, so I tend to take it off for those ones. So we're gonna do the recipe with the sweet potatoes and then I'll give you, if there's any changes, if you're using acorn squash, I'll let you know how to change it up for that. So we have the yam or the sweet potato down in there. We're gonna put a pinch of sea salt, so good quality sea salt or Himalayan salt. It's a good source of minerals and also adds good flavor, punches up the flavor in any recipe. And then here we have coconut oil. So I have about a quarter of a cup of coconut oil. I have a little tiny extra bit there to grease my baking sheet with. So I'm just gonna leave that. So that goes in. And then we're gonna put in our honey. So for honey, I'm using uh, organic raw honey. Now we are gonna cook these, so the honey's not gonna stay raw anymore. I still prefer to use the raw honey because it's just, I feel it's more healthful. So. Uh, I put in about one and a half heaping tablespoons of the honey. Now this is gonna depend on your sweet juice. So if your little kiddo is just transitioning off of the, the processed stuff, you might use a little bit extra. Maybe you'll use two whole tablespoons. If you've been doing this for quite some time and the sweet tooth is adjusted to more of a whole foods diet, you might be able to cut it back to just one or even half of a tablespoon of the honey. The honey does help it to stick together a little bit as well. So we've got coconut oil, honey, yam, and a little bit of salt in there. And we're gonna go in with our spices. So a little bit of flavor with just a pinch of cloves. So at the most, you're probably gonna use like an eighth of a teaspoon. So I use like 
like that much. It's not very much, is it? Because clove is a really strong flavor and you do not want to overpower, especially the little ones don't tend to like too much of a clovey taste. And then we're gonna put in some cinnamon. Now cinnamon is anti-inflammatory as well and also helps with blood sugar balance. And of course, adds a really nice flavor to this. So I put in two, you know, sort of heaping teaspoons of the cinnamon powder. And if you're doing the autoimmune paleo protocol, uh, cinnamon and clove are allowed because they are not seed or nightshade spices. Okay, so that goes in and we're just gonna turn that on for a moment and let it blend up and do its thing. Oh, you know what you guys? I forgot to connect my food processor. Give me one second. I'm here, I'm coming. It's been a really busy day around here. The clients and getting the kiddo out for a birthday party because it's a holiday here in Calgary for the kids. Happy Valentine's Day, by the way. So now we're good to go. Let's turn this puppy on. <laughs> so that we get all of the skin completely blended in. We don't want little chunks of the skin, right? And we get the oil all nice and mixed in, the honey. Mm, it smells good already. So just scrape down the sides and then I give it another little pulse. Get all those spices evenly mixed around. And then what I have here is about two tablespoons of coconut flour. Now coconut flour absorbs a lot of moisture, so you want to add slowly in case your yams were a little bit smaller than mine. You don't want to get too much of this or your cookies will be dry. So you'll put it in maybe a tablespoon at a time. If your yams happen to be a little bit bigger or your squash was a bit bigger, then you're gonna add a little bit more. Basically here, we're looking for a dough-like consistency. Yeah, I'm gonna use the rest of that. That we can spoon out and make sort of little drop cookies with it. We don't want it too dry, but also not really sticky, gooey, wet. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, if you are using the acorn squash instead of the sweet potato or the yam, then I would suggest that you actually use a quarter cup, a full quarter cup of the uh, coconut flour because the squash is a little bit more liquidy when you puree it. So you need a little bit more of that absorbent um, stuff from the, the coconut. Now, the tricky thing with coconut is that when you first put it in, you might think, oh no, that's not enough, I need more. Uh, leave it for just a minute or so because as it sits, it soaks up moisture, okay? There's a lot of fiber in there and it really soaks up the moisture as the time goes by. So two to three tablespoons for the yam of the coconut flour or a quarter of a cup if you're doing the uh, acorn squash. And what you're looking for is a texture that you can just scoop out nicely like this and you're gonna be able to push off your spoon and I'm gonna do that next so that you can see how we make those up. So let's just make a little bit of space here. Now of course remember if you're watching live and have questions, I'm happy to help out with any questions whether it's related to this particular recipe or if it's just related to uh, gut healing or um, any sort of questions that you have about this health journey that you're on with your kids, I'm happy to help out. As long as I can actually see the questions, sometimes I have a hard time seeing them. And if I don't, I'm happy to uh, answer them later. I'll scroll through and answer any questions that might come up for you guys. And if you're not able to make it here live with me today, then certainly post your questions after uh, the show. And I am always monitoring and making sure that I get back and 
help you guys out with whatever questions I can. So I've just got a little tablespoon of the coconut oil left here and I'm going to just smush it on my hands. Great moisturizer. And we do want to grease our parchment paper even though it's non-stick on its own. But I do find that it is a little bit better with these cookies. So I make sure that I grease it up and then we just, you know, use that as a little moisturizer. It's good stuff, that coconut oil. And coconut oil is a great fat to use because it's a medium chain triglyceride. So it's a really good, quick source of energy for our kiddos. Uh, and as well, uh, it's a very stable fat. So when we're cooking with it, it doesn't twist the molecule, the fat molecule. So our bodies are like, all right, yep, I recognize that. That's good, I know what to do with it. So there it is, all greased up. And what we're gonna do is just go in with sort of a, a heaping half tablespoon of our batter. And we're just gonna put that down. I'm just gonna make sure that everybody can see this here. Just scrape it off with the finger down onto the cookie sheet. So that's what I would call a drop cookie. Okay, just like that. Very easy, that's the quickest way to do it. Just going through and flopping those all down. You'll probably get about 12, maybe a little bit more of the small cookies. I do tend to like to make them on the smaller side for this recipe because they cook a little bit quicker and more thoroughly through the entire cookie because we don't have any eggs or binders in this. So if you make them small, that's a little bit better. Now, if you wanted to get fancy and make, you know, something like these guys where you're stamping them, then you're gonna need to flatten them out. So, you know, you would just use maybe a little bit more of your batter, more of a tablespoon size. Okay, and then just squish it flat. And you can get these little guys at, I got this at Michael's. Now I'm not sure they're selling this sort of stuff anymore, but uh, you can get them on Amazon as well. So you're just gonna stamp that through. You would probably need to sprinkle it with a little bit of your coconut flour, stamp it on there so it doesn't stick. And there you go. You can also do it flat out into the bars that I mentioned before. So basically you're just gonna take your batter. Okay, this didn't sit for quite as long, so you're noticing it's a little bit stickier. And I would just flatten that out. And then use a knife to cut them into bar shapes, okay, or squares. So whatever you wanna take the time to do, right? Uh, most of the time, I don't like fiddling around with it and the shapes, so I just go ahead and, you know, slam them out as little drop cookies, and off we go, okay? Life's busy. So they taste just as good, no matter what shape they're in. Uh, if you wanna get fancy, sometimes the kids like it for fun, but it's absolutely optional. Uh, so there you go, then this is gonna go into the oven 325, just in case you couldn't see those different sort of shapes that we're doing, 325 for half an hour. Now I put these on a higher rack in the oven. If you put them on the middle rack or the lower rack, they're gonna burn really fast on the bottom. The sugars in the yam or the squash will burn really quickly. So you wanna make sure they're on the sort of the more upper rack and they're cooking quite slowly. Okay, so half an hour at 325. The other option would be to throw them in at 325 for 15 minutes and then turn the oven off and just leave them in there for an hour or two and they'll sort of dehydrate down. That's an option for you as well. So I'm just gonna set that to the side for the moment. You can also sprinkle them with a little bit of cinnamon, if you like, on top. And let's grab a couple of these guys. This is what the squash ones look like as drop cookies. They're just a little bit lighter in color compared to the yam. Both really yummy, both nice looking cookies. Uh, and you can see they have a nice sort of texture to them. They've got a nice chew. Nice bite. So they're soft, a little crunchy texture on the outside. They're cinnamony and sweet. Really quite lovely. And if you're not worried about being low histamine, you could certainly put raisins into these or chopped up dates or some chopped up figs. You could put um, cranberries sweetened with apple juice. Those would be really nice in there. Um, goji berries, if you're not trying to be AIP, would go quite nicely in there as well. 
Uh, goji berries though are a nightshade and so they can be quite inflammatory. So just be careful with the goji berries. Very nutrient dense, but they can be inflammatory for people who have any sort of autoimmune condition or chronic health condition. So there you go. There are our options for a really quick and easy, grain-free, dairy-free, gluten-free, nut-free, all of the everything that you can imagine free, low histamine, cookies, easy to make, five ingredients, takes very little time, and they're super tasty, and your kids are gonna love them. Pack them up in the lunch kit, and they'll be happy little kiddos. So remember, get the copy of every week's recipe by going to kidshealthrevolution.com, joining the free community. There's also lots of other resources over there for you. Uh, 20 fabulous freezer recipes and a leaky gut quiz and a foods cheat sheet and all kinds of good stuff. So if you're not over there already, hop on over kidshealthrevolution.com, join our community. We have a wonderful group there over here, the camera's over here, of wonderful supportive parents over here in our group. Uh, lots of questions and answers and support going on over there. So you're gonna love it if you're not there already and you get a copy of the recipe each and every week. So I look forward to talking to you guys again next Thursday with another fabulous recipe. Only takes you a few minutes and pack those lunch kits full of really great stuff. Questions, comments, please, if you liked this, give it a little like, even better, give it a share and we can help spread the word of Kids Health Revolution to everybody who needs it. Take good care, everyone. Bye.